say amen again. Certainly we're thankful to God that he has brought safely uh, the choir and orchestra from Washington Adventist University. Can we put our hands together in thanks to God? We welcome you to our church. It's good to have you share this sacred space with us. I want to encourage us from the words of scripture the choir and orchestra will minister to us throughout the Lord's Supper. I want to call your attention to the 13th chapter of the book of John. It was read previously, but we'll go back to it one more time because repetition deepens the impression. John chapter 13. We'll start with verse 3 and we'll read a, a little way to about verse 10. The Bible says, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou, do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. I want to preach to you on the topic, service with a smile. Service with a smile. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, I pray that you would speak wonderful words of life. Pray that you would minister to our hearts and remind us about the true attitude of service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Service with a smile. Serving others can be difficult. Let me try one more time. Serving others can be difficult. All right, we, we, we've got a couple people here who know something about service. Uh, even serving others in the church can be difficult. Sometimes you spend your resources, you expend your energy in the interest of other people, especially people who don't seem to appreciate it, and it can be downright exhausting. In spite of that reality, uh, the reality is the most effective people and or leaders are servants. Are we still together? It's really one of those kingdom contradictions when you read the Bible. 
You see, there are a lot of contradictions in the Bible. There, there are contradictions as it relates to success. You see, uh, 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 the Bible says in order to find your life, you must lose your life. That, that sounds like uh, a contradiction. Are you all still with me out there? Uh, uh, the Bible says in order to be rich, you have to be poor. That, that, that sounds like a contradiction. The Bible says to, uh, in order for you to go uh, uh, high, you've got to go low. That, that sounds like... A, a contradiction and and nobody has ever demonstrated any of these values or principles uh, better uh, than that living uh, walking talking contradiction called Jesus are you all still with me tonight uh, this morning on the night before his crucifixion uh, Jesus was with his disciples somewhere in Jerusalem and Jesus does the unthinkable because though he is the king of glory though he is the king of kings and the Lord of Lords uh, when there was no servant ready or available to perform the duty of washing the disciples feet uh, Jesus the high priest the son of God assume the role of a servant I uh, get it the master becomes the servant the greatest becomes the least the highest becomes the lowest Jesus picks up a towel and he starts serving and if I could just park here for a little while I tell you that too many of us want to ditch the towel because we're looking for a title I wish I had a church uh, you see in this selfish society about going ahead and and getting ahead in this competitive culture I uh, we have been taught consciously and subconsciously that every one of us ought to make a name for ourselves that every one of us wants to be the man or the woman every one of us wants to Im be important and the challenge with that is that we are so driven for titles that we forget the towel and what I have found out is that the way to great success is through humility I wish I had a church I dare suggest to you that the church would be farther along, that our society would be more united, that we as a people would have been bonded together in love if we had stopped searching for titles and more of us started picking up some towels. If we could stop worrying about what our titles are and do the work that needs to be done, our society would be advanced. I know a lot of you are quiet because you don't think that it's your job to be serving anybody, but I've come to tell you that you and I are called to be servants and we need more servants than superstars. Are you all with the preacher out there? I wish Washington, D.C. had more servants than superstars. It seems like everybody in Washington in the, from the White House to the Congress Congress. They're just there to make a name for themselves. Everybody is grandstanding. Senate floor speeches are now cut up into little sound bites that are used as commercials. I wish we had more servants who would get the government to operate than superstars who are running for president. I wish I had a church right about now. You see, in every area of our lives, we're called to be servants in marriage, in ministry, in the workplace, in relationships. You and I are called to help and serve other people. And so for you to be a faithful servant, there are three principles that I want to share with you. And then uh, we're going to go and have some food. Uh, the first thing I want to tell you is that to serve, you have to be secure in yourself. You see, verse 3 of John 13, Elder Price says, uh, the Bible says that Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hands and he knew that he was come from God and he knew that he was going to God. You see, Jesus, the Bible places Jesus' context, his service in the context of his, of, of his uh, uh, security in, of, in and of himself. The text says he knew who he was. The text says that he knew what he had. He knew who had given it to him. He knew where he came from and he knew where he was going. You see, Jesus knew his identity. And one of the reasons I think insecurity is one of the most subtle and underrated yet diabolical weapons of the enemy is because most people don't even know that they have it. 
You see, most people are insecure and don't recognize it when they operate in it. When you're insecure, you have to spend time trying to manipulate people and, and gaining things. And, and you spend time in power grabs and, and power grains. You have to uh, uh, try to make yourself appear to have more value than, 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 than it seems. You, you don't value you, so you spend all of your time uh, trying to acquire accoutrements to help determine who you are. And, and because you don't understand who you are, you define yourself by the car that you drive or by the title that you have because uh, uh, you, you define yourself by the things that you have amassed. And, and I know that it's true because I meet people all the time and when I meet people, I extend my hand and I say, my name is Nicardo Delahaye. I don't extend my hand and say, my name is Dr. Delahaye. I don't extend my hand and say, my name is Pastor Delahaye. I don't extend my hand and use any of the titles that God has given to me. When I extend my hand, I identify myself by the name my mama gave me. My name is Nicardo Delahaye. Uh, there are some people though, you give them a little half of a title, are you all still with the preacher out there, and they throw it around every five minutes. I remember I met a man not too long ago and he told me that he was the reverend doctor so on and so forth. And I'm struggling because that ain't the name his mother gave him. He gave, his mother gave him a simple name, but he defines himself not based upon who he is, but based upon the titles that he has acquired. When people introduce themselves, just from my vantage point with a the title, they're propping themselves up on confidence that they don't really have. And watch how the devil uses insecurity. When you don't know who you are, you go into debt spending money you can't afford to look a part that you don't even know that you have. Driving a car that you can't afford in a house you can't afford to pay for, wearing clothes you can't afford, got credit card with, uh, uh, debt through the wazoo, so busy trying to impress other people. But the truth is that you're really not trying to impress other people. You're trying to impress you. Are we still out there together? Because insecure people don't really have to impress other people. The, the more immediate need is to impress themselves so that it'll boost their self-confidence. My God, am I preaching and y'all just not getting this thing in here? I feel like I'm preaching some good stuff. Y'all, see, if Steve Harvey said this stuff, y'all would be all over it. If Dr. Phil was saying this stuff, y'all would be like, oh my God, Dr. Phil. If Oprah said it, I mean, man, it would be like a whole book, a movie, and all that kind of stuff. I'm up in here preaching my heart out, and y'all looking at me like, what time are we gonna eat the, uh, oil? What time are we going to get the grape juice? You know what I'm but, 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 but see, we struggle trying to define ourselves uh, because uh, there's a level of insecurity. Uh, in order to serve, you have to be secure in who you are. The Bible says that Jesus knew that his father had given all things into his hand. Uh, Jesus knew where he had come from, and Jesus knew exactly where he was going. And see, when you are confident in who you are, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about you. Hello, see, 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 some of you are, are quiet because you're not sure who you are. And, and some of you have been looking to a man to define you and to affirm you. Some of us have been looking to a woman to tell us that we're all right, that we're okay. Some of us are looking for affirmation in our bank accounts. Uh, but I've come to tell you that you don't need affirmation from a woman or a man or a bank account if you've got Jesus. All right, y'all are not feeling me, so let me put it where you can preach it. Uh, let me tell you who you are if you're looking for yourself. Uh, Psalm 112 tells me that I'm a child of God. Uh, uh, John 15, verse 15 tells me that I am a friend of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says that I'm a body, a member of the body of Christ. Ephesians 1, 1 tells me that I am a saint of God. Uh, Colossians 1, 14 tells me that I've been redeemed and I've been forgiven. Uh, Colossians 2.10, y'all not shouting yet, says that I am complete in Christ. Uh, Romans 8 verse 1 says that I am free from condemnation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1 says that I am a co-worker with God. Uh, Ephesians 2 verse 6 says that I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 2.10 says that I am the workmanship of God. Ephesians 1 verse 5 says that I have been adopted into God's family. I am a child of the most high God. 
So, I, I, I'm not insecure because I have found security in my identity in Christ. I, I, the second principle, and I, I promise I'm not going to keep you long, second principle is that you can only serve when you do it as a calling and not for compliments. Uh, in, in verse 6 to 8, uh, uh, Peter sees Jesus coming, and, and Jesus gets up to Peter, and, and Peter gives Jesus a piece of his mind uh, because uh, uh, Peter uh, has already declared that Jesus is the Christ, that he's the son of the living God. Uh, and Jesus said to him, blessed art thou for flesh and blood didn't reveal this unto you. Uh, so in Peter's mind, Jesus is lofty. Mm -hmm. Too lofty of a person to get on his knees and wash somebody's feet. So he was convinced in his mind because of who he thought Jesus was that what Jesus was doing was beneath him. Are you all still with me? And see, some of us will never find fulfillment because we keep on allowing Peters in our lives to fill our head with these ideas of who they think we are. And we start operating in the ignorant arrogance that people gave us because they told you that you were too good to do what you're doing. I wish I had a witness in this place right now. See, people say stuff like, you're not going to take that, are you? People will say stuff like, they really ask you to do that? They, they don't realize you're too good for that? Like, people will say stuff like, been there and, and done that. Oh, okay, y'all not feeling me. I, I remember uh, a couple years ago, uh, we used to have the pastors work security at camp meeting. And I remember, I, I hated working in security, not because it was demeaning, but because y'all just don't listen. Are we still together out there? So I, I would be working security, and they would have us, they, 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 they picked the oddest colors for the pastors to be in. We're at camp meeting, and they have us in, in neon green or this bright orange shirt that says security on the back. And I, I didn't mind being security, uh, but it's just that y'all don't listen. I tell y'all, don't drive that way. And, and people say, I've been driving over here for the last 20 years. I say, okay, go ahead, go get stuck. I don't care, go ahead. If, if that's how you feel today, then go ahead and do, do what you gotta do. Uh, but, 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 but for real, I, I didn't like uh, the attitude that people would have, but people would come up to me and they would say, oh, they shouldn't do you like that. They said, they really did you like that? You, you're a pastor. I, aren't you, you should be inside preaching. That's what they used to say. You should be inside preaching. You shouldn't be out here directing traffic. Uh, but what I learned is uh, of that uh, the Bible says that whatever my hands find to do, I ought to do it with all my might. Are you all still here with me today? And so, and so I'm not going to buy into the press release that people uh, 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 have about me. I'm not going to buy into the rumors and the ideologies because at the end of the day, uh, that's not going to benefit me much. I remember when Pastor Sinclair served this church, uh, one of the things that people would marvel at was, was after we had eaten lunch downstairs, uh, Pastor Sinclair would often be seen with a garbage can collecting garbage. I looked at him and I said, wow, more power to you, man, because that's really a humble thing to do for the preacher to run around and collect the garbage. And I take my hat off to him, and I must confess that I am not yet there. Y'all don't expect me to start picking up the trash. But, but the point is that, that, that he didn't get so puffed up with what people told him about himself that, that he couldn't serve. And see, Peter is saying to Jesus, uh, you don't think you're going to wash my feet, do you? Because you, 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 you're too good for this. And Jesus says, if I don't wash you, then, then you'll have none of me. Uh, you see, he's speaking metaphorically. He's saying, if you're not washed by me, you can't participate with me and have my power. So watch. So, so, so then Peter says, well, Lord, uh, don't only wash my feet, wash my head, wash my hands, uh, wash all of me. And Jesus ignores Peter and keeps on washing his feet uh, because Jesus is not doing his work for compliments. Uh, he's doing it because it's a calling. And, and when you work for a because you're called, uh, you don't do it in spite because of compliments and you don't do it in spite of the protest you just do it because that's your calling you see if you work for the Lord then you'll do stuff in private that'll never get celebrated in public 
If you work for the Lord, you don't do it to get a pat on your back. You do it so that at the end of the day, Jesus is saying, well done. You see, a calling is when you, what you do serves a higher purpose beyond yourself. It's a calling. Ministry is a calling. Parenting is a calling. Marriage is a calling. Working in the church, Lord have mercy, is a calling. And you have to see it as a calling because anytime it doesn't go pleasant or it doesn't go your way, you'll quit. Are you all with me out there? We don't, I don't work for money. And I, and, 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 and I work for the Lord. And, and, and see, when you're, there's a difference between serving and being a servant. See, people who serve, serve, and they dictate and stipulate the parameters of their service. But servants don't dictate, don't stipulate, and their service has no parameters. I, I, I wish I had a church right now. I wish I had like half. All right, all right. Let, me, let, me, let me work with it. Because, see, see, if you look at the table of people who, whose feet Jesus is washing, there is a Judas who has already cut a deal to betray Jesus. And Jesus is willing to wash his feet. There's a Peter who that same night is going to deny him three times. And cuss and carry on so bad that the Bible couldn't even record all that Peter had to say when he was denying Christ. And Jesus washed his feet because uh, Jesus was serving uh, because he was mature enough to bless even those that would curse him. And see, servants don't choose who they serve, they just serve. Servants don't serve only the people who love them, but they serve all. Servants don't serve people who are going to bless them. They serve everybody, even those who don't have the ability to return the blessing. So if you're running in your mouth about me, that's all right. I can still bless you. I, I can still serve you. Why are y'all so quiet on me in here today? All right, so finally, when you serve, you won't let other people's dirt get in your way. See, well, somebody's saying, Pastor, how you get dirt in this text? I'm, I'm glad you asked, because the dirt is all up in there already. See, during Jesus' day, they had a lot of oxen, horses, donkeys, camels. In addition to that, flocks of sheep were murdered from, mur moved from country paddocks into the city for sale. Not to put it too, too fine a point, but there was a lot of animal excrements on the road. And the carts would drive through all of the excretion and, and unintentionally they would spread the goods around to make sure that the walking citizenry didn't miss their chance at stepping in some aromatic treasures. Y'all follow what I'm trying to say? So even if you had just left one of the Roman baths all clean and shining with perfume oil, by the time you arrived home, your sandal feet would be really filthy. You see, because your feet weren't merely dirty with the dust of the road. So, so when they would enter into somebody's home, their house, uh, they, with dirt on their feet, uh, they, everyone was supposed to have a servant at the door who would wash the feet uh, of the people who were coming in. And if there wasn't a servant available, then the owner of the house would pour water on the feet to wash the dirt off. No matter how dirty their feet were, the feet always got washed. The, ne the servant never said to anybody, your feet are too dirty. The servant never said, your feet are too dirty to be washed. The servant never says, your feet are so dirty, you can't come into the house. The, the servant always washed feet because the servant remembers that at some point, his feet were dirty too. Are, are we still together out there? I, I, I think the church would be greater if we remembered that at some point we had dirty feet too. I've got some dirt and you got some dirt and all God's children have got some dirt. Are you all still with me out there? But when Jesus went down to wash their feet, and if I had a little more time, I would talk about how uh, we are a nation of immigrants. I wish I had a witness out there. And, and, and that we can have an anti-immigrant message if we would like, but, but we all are immigrants. Y'all 
don't get quiet on me now. Your folk might have been here a couple hundred years. My folk might have been here a couple decades, but we're all immigrants. Are we still together out there? Uh, but, 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 and it would be behoove us to remember that at some point our people came here as immigrants. And I don't know how people, how black people in America end up so hated. Y'all don't get quiet on me now. I don't know how black people in America end up so hated. I mean, our folk didn't come through Ellis Island. Are you all still with me out there? Our folk didn't have an option of coming. Our folk were, were picked up, chained, shackled, and transported across the ocean. Why are y'all so quiet on me in here? So, I mean, we are like the worst of the immigrants because we ain't even choose to immigrate. We were just brought here. So if anybody should be accepted by society, it should be the folk who were forced to come. Okay, maybe I sound weird. It's okay. But we all, all ought to remember that our feet were once dirty too. And I like that when Jesus went down to wash their feet, he didn't say, I'm not going to let their dirt, uh, I, I, I'm, I, he said, I'm not going to let their dirt get in the way of what God has called me to do. And aren't you glad that God has never allowed your dirt to get in the way of him ministering to you? And for those of you that have got some dirt on your feet today, I want to encourage you uh, that God will not let your dirt get in the way of blessing you. Because God doesn't bless you because of you. God blesses you in spite of you. God doesn't use me as a minister because of me. He uses me as a minister in spite of me. It is my weakness, not my strength that, you, that causes God to use me. It's not my preaching ability or leadership ability that call, that get caused God or prompted God to pluck me out and say I need you to serve me it was my need for him and the recognition that the only way God could save me is to make me clergy that's why God has me here because he is trying to work out salvation in me and God is not working with anybody because of their dirt or because of their lack of dirt God works with people in spite of their dirt there may be a whole lot of adulterers in this place but God is working with you in spite of your mess. There may be a whole lot of liars up in here, but God is working with you in spite of you. There may be some unfaithful folk in here, but God is working with you in spite of you. There may be somebody in here who was at Foxwoods last Friday night, but God is not working with you because of you. He's working with you in spite of you. I am so glad that God does not look at my resume and my history when he decides to save me I am so glad that Jesus saved me not because of me but because of him because of his goodness because of his mercy because of his faithfulness because of his love that's why I can sing great is thy faithfulness that's why I can sing how great thou art that's why I can sing amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me I once was lost uh, but now I'm found uh, twas blind uh, but now I see uh, there's an old hymn that they used to sing that says look upon Jesus uh, sinless is he father impute thy life unto me my life of scarlet uh, my sin and woe uh, covered with his life uh, whiter than snow uh, I wish I had about four people who could stand on their feet uh, and clap their hands uh, because you're covered with his his life uh, whiter than snow uh, fullness of his life uh, now shall you know uh, your life of scarlet uh, your sin and woe are covered with his life uh, now you're whiter than snow can anybody declare I'm redeemed uh, redeemed how I love to proclaim it uh, I've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb uh, is there anybody in here that can just sing about God's grace and say grace grace uh, God God's grace, uh, grace that will pardon uh, and cleanse within. Uh, is there anybody that is excited that there is still a fountain uh, that's filled with blood, uh, drawn from Emmanuel's veins uh, and sinners' floods uh, beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains?
I'm glad that my dirt does not turn God off. My Bible says, but God commendeth his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Will you pray with me? God, our God, today as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we cogitate, we contemplate, we think about your goodness, God. We think about your faithfulness. We think about your mercy. We think about how you look down on us, mired in sin. And you chose to release a fountain of blood that's been drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And you say to us that we can plunge beneath that flood, but we can lose all our guilty stains. God, we're thankful that you wash away guilty stains. We thank you that you use people, ordinary people like us, people with lispering, stammering tongues. God, we're so grateful that you look beyond us you see something in us that's worth saving. God, today we just magnify you. We thank you for saving us. Now, God, we take it one more step before. Take away a heart of stone. Replace it with a heart of flesh, we pray. God, we're tired of being unlike you. Tired of being unchristlike. God, we're tired of sinful desires. We're tired, God, of running away from you. We just want communion with you. We want to be at peace with you. God, we want to be one with you. And God, we want to emulate you. Help us to be servants. God, help us to be secure in our identity as children of God. God, may we not get caught up in the compliments and the praise or the criticism. God, may we not be turned off by the dirtiness and the messiness. But may we be like you, bold, going into messy, dirty places and bringing light, bringing hope, bringing wholeness, bringing healing. God, as we celebrate this Lord's Supper, we pray that someone would be inspired afresh, and that someone would desire to serve you for time and for eternity. There's a person here today who needs to make a decision for you. We pray that that person would make a decision in their heart right now to give their all to you. As they make that decision in their heart, I pray that you would drive them to seek me out after the service and to let me know how we as a church can help them. God, drive that person who's making up a decision in their mind to be baptized. Drive them to me at the door after the, at the conclusion of this service. I pray that they would come saying, I've decided to be baptized. Give me the time, give me the date, because I want to go all the way with Jesus. And Lord, we look forward to that time where you will come again and you will redeem us from this earth. We look forward to that time where we will drink of the fruit of the vine with you. Because you promised us that you wouldn't drink of it until we're in the kingdom together. So God, we hold you to that promise. And we look forward to that moment where we'll be reunited with you and spend the ceaseless ages of eternity in your courts and in your presence. This is our prayer in the mighty and majestic name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Let all of God's children say, Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of God.